Jared had, uh, you know, six years and $27 million to try and uh, broaden the, uh, the race. But at this stage of the game, we feel really confident. We've closed the gap, and we just need to continue to move forward. Uh, good. And doing uh, manufacturing tours, or just tours all over the state, um, how do you get to connect with people more than maybe with other events? Well, look, it's, what I've tried to do, whether it was in the official office or even when I'm campaigning, if I go visit a company, uh, especially during the last couple of years in the official office, I always wanted to talk to the employees. You get a better sense of what's going on, how they feel, you're able to uh, listen to their concerns and questions, just like we did today. So uh, I continue to do that so people get to know me. Look, I've been around for 44 years like Sheriff Brown has been. Uh, I've been in business for 30 years, and uh, what I'm trying to do is just get people to know who I am and what I stand for. So there's a big difference. And what have kind of just been the top issues that you've heard as, as you've been on the campaign trail? Frustrated with Washington, hate career politicians. Uh, they don't think uh, sanctuary cities should be around. Uh, they're concerned about jobs in the economy. Uh, and of course, the opioid crisis always comes up as well. Now, not so much in manufacturing, but when you're out, you're out of some community. Right. And first day, if you win, what's kind of your jump off point? What do you really want to keep the ground running on? I'm always going to continue to talk about our debts and deficits, and we've got to get those under control. I don't want to, I don't want to pass this on to our children and grandchildren, so I'm going to continue to work toward doing that. I want to continue to grow our economy. That's why I supported the tax cut and jobs bill, because that's an opportunity. Look, in the 90s, it wasn't no magic wand that the Congress did or, or President Clinton did. It was growth. It was uh, something that wasn't even manufactured by Washington. We had the year 2000 bubble. We had the tech boom. We had 6.2% average growth for six years. And that's how we were able to pay down our debts and get a surplus. That's what we need to do now. We need to look at our spending. If we don't have, we don't have a, uh, a spending a revenue problem. We're going to have record revenues in the Treasury this year. We have a spending problem. And because of that, we need to look at our spending, we need to get our revenues up, we can do that with growth. At the same time, we need to look at ways we can look at some of our spending and get our, get our budget balanced. We can't pass this on to our children and grandchildren. And final thing, kind of message for the last week, what do you hope to tell the voters? I keep telling everybody the difference between Sheriff Brown and I is stark. I mean, I'm a businessman, grew up in a blue collar town. I created over 1,500 jobs, just a, just a couple hundred dollars, started my first business, created over 1,500 jobs, employed over 3,000 people. Sheriff Brown was the son of a doctor, went to an Ivy League school, with the year he graduated, he uh, ran for politics, he's been in politics for 44 years, protecting only one job, his own. There's a stark difference. When he talks about creating jobs, he's never created one except for himself. When I've talked about creating jobs, it's about 1,500. So I'm hoping that people get to know me. People here in my district already know me. It's a big state, though. So what I learned was uh, this district, I had a 91% name ID and a 70% approval rating before I jumped into this race. Mm -hmm. When I jumped into the statewide race, I had a 6% name ID. Mm. So it's tough uh, to run against an incumbent with 44 years, but the message is important and that's what I'm trying to get out.